John and Yoko were avid viewers of Eyewitness News, and Yoko called me, you know, within a day or two of the original episode. They were living down on, uh, uh, I think, Beekman Street. We're down in the village, in the West Village, and it was their kind of their love and apartment. They interviewed everybody in their big king-size bed in the back room of this railroad apartment down in the village. And she just called me and said, hey, let's be friends. And I went down there and, you know, we started hanging out. We had met once before, actually, but we started hanging out. And ultimately, they would do the last fully rehearsed concert of John's life as a benefit to help the Willowbrook kids. Yeah. I love John Lennon. First of all, I was a big Beatles fan. I had long hair because of the Beatles. Uh, you know, they didn't have any mustaches, at least not <laughs> at that time. They, you know, they had at various points in their career, but I just loved the, the Beatles. I, I came actually to know all of them. I had met George Harrison first in 1971. Uh, he uh, and Ravi Shankar did the concert for Bangladesh. And I, I got to know George and uh, Sal Swimmer, who was a producer, Alan Klein, who formed the uh, Apple Records. Um, and they, they made the template with the concert for Bangladesh and Madison Square Garden in 1971. It became the model where big stars could have big musical events for reasons other than kind of a love-in, which is not a fundraiser, uh, or political rallies. This was for a cause. Uh, George and, and Robbie, and they did a magnificent job, and it was a wonderful concert. People forget it now, but it was, uh, it was just extraordinary in terms of its power and in terms of its effectiveness. And in, in terms of my own private life, aside from the, you know, showing me, educating me that this was a way to make money for a cause, uh, it also introduced me to that whole level of rock and roll stars, and I styled myself as the rock and roll newsman. And so it was natural for me to hang out with George Harrison. It was natural for me to hang out with John Lennon. And, you know, I kind of, it became the jet setification of Geraldo in, in a way that was ultimately, I think, damaging to my journalistic career, or certainly my journalistic credibility, but it sure was fun. And hanging out with John, who it, it totally had my sensibilities, he was anti-war, uh, he was pro civil rights. He was pro women's rights. He was, uh, uh, you know, an adopted New Yorker. He wanted to be here. He wanted to hang out, and uh, wanted to make love, not war. And you know, it was just uh, became good friends. And I was honored to be around him and Yoko. And um, they later, when I asked agreed to do the concert at Madison Square Garden. I mean, it was a, a rocky road because they are rock and rollers and the whole world uh, is at their footsteps, but Jenna was also being plagued at the time by the immigration department right. that wanted to get him deported and something, uh, you know, it's funny that the first illegal alien I championed was John Lennon, and now it's the big source of friction here at Fox and yeah. me, but uh, that's another story. Um, it's, um, it just was wonderful. And just hanging out with them and, 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 you know, they introduced me to people like Shanana and Roberta Flack and Stevie Wonder, uh, you know, who did these concerts for me and later John Denver when he was as big as the Beatles and uh, the Allman Brothers and Charlie Daniels and, that, you know, just like on and on. We just did event after event and, you know, I, I became kind of a, the, uh, the, the pro bono empresario, you know, just hosting this event and that event, more often than not pegged toward making money to get the people out of the institutions. Right.